All right. I'm Kaylee Pear. I'm back with uh, Bonnie Molinax, who's top producer in Northwest Georgia. And, you know, a lot of people have questions about staging. It's like this word that kind of hovers over a seller. <laughs> staging. So I wanted to come to the expert and find out uh, the do's, the don'ts, and how to best set yourself up. And and, and really is how important is it? So uh, Bonnie Molinax with Molinax team, thank you for joining me today. How, what do you have to say about this? Thank you for having me. You know, I find that sellers have two major stresses when they list their house. The number one is, you know, price. Obviously, they want what they want. But the second is staging. Like, they are so freaked out about what they need to do to get their house ready to sell. And they often have this enormous list of things that they think they have to do to sell their property. And I always tell them, before you do anything, let me come over and take a look at your property and tell you what is important and what is not important to get your house ready to sell. And I think the word staging is different from state to state. So in some states, People will literally move out of their house and hire a company to bring in all new furniture, whatever sleek in and new, and spend tens of thousands of dollars in staging the property. And that is done in certain states. It is not done where we live. So an, an example of staging would be using what, if somebody's still living in a home until it sells, what I do is I'm trained in using what they already have in their home and help accessorize what they have. Sometimes it's a matter of moving furniture just a little bit over, um, opening up walkways, minimizing things that they have, too many accessories or tchotchkes. And sometimes it's just moving stuff from room to room because people are looking at your house and looking at your rooms to buy. They're not interested in buying your stuff. They want to visualize their furniture and their stuff in your home. And it's our job to help you make the room open and appealing to them so they can see that, so they can see their stuff in your home and not have interruptions of stuff in your house that bothers them and they can't see beyond. And in photography as well, that's a huge thing for me is, there's certain things in photos that interrupt a picture. For example, I tell sellers and I show them um, quickly on a cell phone. We do professional photos, but while we're right there, I show them if I take a picture of this room and I see 20 pillows and throw blankets and all this stuff and sometimes rugs that interrupt a picture, people can't see beyond their stuff. They can't see the room. So that's so key in focusing on what needs to leave the room what needs to stay in the room, and what might need to be stored away out of the room. I haven't known you for very long, but the short time that I have known you, I, you love this part. I do. I yeah. do. I'm not a decorator, but it's it's minimizing, you know, it's, it's not how we sell a home. It's not how we, I'm sorry, it's not how we live in a home. It's how we sell a home. So I always tell people this is not personal. You know, if I was to sell my house today, there's, you know, a good 15 to 20 percent of the stuff I would put away, store or take out of the rooms so people could see what we're selling. And it's, it's just kind of fun. And I, I noticed, too, that people really like less like mm -hmm. they we, we we have so much stuff in our house that we enjoy and we love. And it's it's important and meaningful to us. But now we're doing something different. We're selling this property and it's 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 not personal. And that's another thing is people think they have to take down all their family personal pictures and they do not have to do that unless you have an entire wall covered in this. It's OK to leave some family pictures and personal things up like that because the, the new buyers like to see who lives here, like who loves here. What's this about? Just a little bit, not a whole lot. And, and why would you say home staging is so important? Like what's so what, what's so important about making sure that it's set up the right way? Again, people want to be able to visualize their stuff in this home. Mm -hmm. And, and they look at magazines. We're looking online all the time at decor and um, things that they want to do and a house that's beautifully staged. You know, none of that stays right unless it's negotiated in the sale, but people fall in love also with your ideas and your decor. You go into a beautifully decorated home, 
people may not have beautiful stuff that they're bringing, but they fall in love with how you've decorated and designed a room or how your furniture flows through the room and they get great ideas and they buy what they see. Yeah. Buy what we see. No, absolutely. And I mean, it, 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 when you look at it and you say, okay, you buy what you see, you like this setup, maybe you don't have great stuff. Does staging always mean that you need to have the certain type of furniture and the certain type of setup? Absolutely not. Okay. So, you know, again, they want to, people think they have to buy stuff to sell. We're not selling a new home. We're selling a retail home typically. Sometimes, very rarely, but sometimes I'll suggest to a seller in a room that may be really, really busy, like a bedroom, and you've got um, all kinds of colors and fabrics and stuff going on, just too much. I might recommend getting a white or a neutral duvet or blanket, or they may already have one in the house in the closet that they can put over a bed. Um, and that immediately neutralizes. Here's a good example of a room where that's exactly what they did. And it just calms the space down so much. And it also makes the room look so much bigger too by having, I call it the Macy's bed. This, when you walk into Macy's, you know, the bed is just perfect and straight and the sheets and the comforter and everything's tight down the sides. And, and it just gives this feel of freshness and um, clean current. Um, I want to, I, I want my room to look like this kind of feel. Yeah. No, when you, when you look at it, it's very inviting. It's, 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 it's oh, okay. I'm, I'm going to go lay in that bed, even though you really shouldn't lay in the bed. You Don't know. lay in the bed. <laughs> it's look at the bed. You're not but, a vampire to lay in your in the bed <laughs> you know people take pictures too when you go into a beautiful and not and not that you know most of the homes are beautifully decorated but people get such great ideas going into different houses and they're taking pictures of stuff that may you know not be buying that house but they love what somebody might have done in their bookcases you know just accessorizing and all that and and that's one thing that i think that i'm really good at is helping people work with what they have already and changing the space up again to make it more saleable and more desirable for the masses. And, and it's really very easy to do. It's hard to do it when it's your own property. It's so easy for me to do it for somebody else. Yeah. So I, I, you just made a comment with, I, we like to do it with your stuff. So people don't need to actually go out and purchase any new items to do this. You can just do it with whatever you have. It is so rare that people have to buy anything. I mean, sometimes they have to buy, um, you know, things that are broken and that need like, like I just went into a house the other day. And as I approached the front porch, um, the doorknob, it was horrible in horrible condition. And I'm like, that's like your first impression right there. <laughs> if we had to change the whole handrail doorknob thing, um, because it was just pitiful and, and it sets the tone right away when you walk up to a house and things are, shambles right away you know so what about this should we take a moment of silence <laughs> yeah you know i wanted to stage this front porch with rocking chairs but there was a safety issue going on here so <laughs> seriously yeah I yeah i see a couple nails <laughs> yeah <laughs> we see it all right but um <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as we talk about this, you've kind of showed a few examples, a what to do, what not to do. Um, right. Let's, I, you know, I'm a visual learner. So anybody at home who wants to kind of visualize by looking at a, a person's living room that's not staged yet. Yep. Uh, so let's let's pull this up. So, so, yeah, this is a house I just recently went into and I told the homeowner, don't do anything till I come. She's like, I'm setting up for Halloween. I'm like, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. They had small children. Um, so I walked that's in okay. and that's OK well, to set up for Halloween for pictures. It's absolutely OK to set up for holidays. Definitely. Now, this is just a quick cell phone shot. This is not professional photography, but. And, you know, they have something draped over the fireplace. That's Halloweeny. And um, let's go. This this room is really actually fine. But go into the kitchen picture for me. So they're in the midst of doing Halloween. And what I shared with her is I love the centerpiece. There's too much going on on the dining room table. So let's minimize that. Let's keep the runner. Let's keep the centerpiece there and everything else. Let's take that off. But over at the bar, 
which is such a focal point of the room, right? That's the heart of the house right there. I was specific about take everything off of that bar. What I liked were the bananas and the hand soap. And I think there's like a little pumpkin thing on there and that's it. And then um, show the sleekness of that bar, show the openness of this kitchen, show off this backsplash and the light fixtures. Like uh, that's what people want to see when they see the shot and it, it would be, you know, very wide angle shots of this kitchen. It's fine to have a couple little things on the refrigerator and maybe one or two things on top of the refrigerator, but nothing more than that. And, you know, it's a galley kitchen. People love this. It's open to the dining room, but it's so important. Pictures, photography is the, the most important thing besides pricing that a seller can do because I want them to fall in love with this house before they ever walk in that pictures is what grabs people your first showing is at your kitchen table online in your pajamas walking through the house right that's what i call your first showing and your second showing is when they drive by and they look at the house in the neighborhood and they go oh i want to go in that house and the third showing is actually the first time they walk in the house and that's when they go, I, I'm, I'm in love. You know, I, I fall really in love with this house and I want to make an offer. And it's, it's my job to set them up for that to happen. And I don't sugarcoat it with sellers. I tell them what's really important and it's not personal. It's just how we can sell your home for as much money as possible and make it look the best. So this is an example of the playroom. This is like the loft over the den. They have small children and she was like, what do I need to do up here? And I said, look, we don't want to disturb the children that much. Um, everybody has toys, laundry and grocery, right? It, we all have this in our house. It's okay. Just clean it up, put the stuff up off the carpet, tidy it a little bit and then leave it alone. Um, somebody can see that this could be a great pool table room. It could play a game room. It could be a den, upstairs den, um, whatever. They just want to see the space. It's not overcrowded. There's a sofa and some toys and it looks like a beanbag and it's just a big space. But that's what we're showing. We're trying to sell the space, not the stuff and not the toys. Bathroom. So this is a staged bathroom. They did a fantastic job here. Um, and it's not a big bathroom, but, you know, it's showing sleek countertops, you know, one little accessory, towels that match, showing off the tile, bam nothing crowded. Yeah. So I, I really think like showing those examples and walking through, because some of that's like, I would have probably thought, okay, no pictures, not, you know, but that's not the case. It's no. way more simple than that. It doesn't have to be a huge undertaking. And, you know, I, 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 this is such a huge topic. And, you know, if anybody has any questions that, that, that we didn't cover in this, please put them in the comments below. Uh, let us know if there's something else that's to do with putting a house on the market that you would want to hear from Bonnie on uh, in our next couple episodes that we're going to be doing. Otherwise, I think, you know, uh, we've covered a lot here today, Bonnie. I want to thank you for your expertise and the insight into the whole staging thing. And I, and I love how into it you are. It's awesome. My pleasure. This was fun. All thank right. Well, everybody me. have a great day. Thank you for watching. And again, remember to uh, put any other questions you may have in the comments below.